the infrastructure that existed back then and then exists today is not set up for tomorrow. Specifically what I'm talking about, and I'm gonna call a few brands over here. Uh, CCS originally was designed uh, version one with 400 volt architecture. And in fact, even today, Tesla's V3 superchargers are at a 400 volt architecture. Their V4s are designed to go up to the, the standard of 1000 volts for CCS. You have standards that are going to 1500 volts already. And we're gonna talk about standards a little bit later. The emphasis I'm making here as uh, infrastructure is starting to open up towards other vehicles, vehicles are already on the 800 volt architectures. And so OEM manufacturers are now designing their vehicles to be backwards compatible in order to work on that infrastructure because they themselves want to be, give you the best experience. Well, our charger is set up for standards of the future, not as just yesterday, not just today, but for tomorrow. So the new charger is designed with interoperability and standards in mind. And so in terms of start charging standards, you have CCS. Uh, we've charged Teslas on this. You got the Tesla NACS and you have MCS standard. You also have Chatmo standards. Well, the whole point here is universal application. We're not in a closed network. So we're here to work with all OEMs uh, and this charge day proved that no matter what vehicle came up, we were able to charge it. And so I talked a little bit about earlier um, some of the limitations on the grid. And so one of the reasons, uh, and I'm coming back to this, um, from a couple prior videos. A lot of people ask, why are we making our own standard? Well, it's simply because the standards that exist and the standards that are coming up are not aligned. For example, megawatt charging is coming sooner rather than later. But unfortunately, the MCS standard, which is purely focused on medium heavy duty, not just vehicles, but uh, outside markets like heavy duty, uh, industrial, agriculture, marine space, uh, but they don't support AC charging. An infrastructure like in the warehouse that we're at now, or a manufacturing facility, has 480 volt power. And so there are systems out there um, that can accept 480 power, but the, the standard itself, CCS standard is what I'm talking about specifically, is limited to 240 volts in America single phase, uh, the type two throughout Europe and other countries is uh, three phase, 240 volts AC um, at 22 kilowatts max, that's 80 amps. What about a facility like this that I can pull 200 amps out of my panel because I have a battery pack for my electric truck that's four times the size? Well, we're forced to create our own standard. And that's not too far off how another OEM created their own standard because at that time it didn't exist. But once again, we're open source in terms of our charging infrastructure. And so it comes with a lot of developments. You've seen we pushed 1.2 megawatts uh, and it takes a lot of developments, not just on, uh, you can't just design a handle, you have to design custom interconnects that allow that passage of current, custom cables. And give you an example, this is what a fuse looks like for a megawatt charger. So in terms of interoperability, we're open and in terms of future standards, we are MCS ready, we're formerly AAC ready, we've charged Teslas, we've proven we can do CCS. Basically, you throw it at us, we can charge anything. Um, and it's not restricted just to vehicles because there's customers out there that use battery packs in, as I mentioned, marine, mining, agriculture, aviation, locomotive. It's incredible the applications that these chargers go into.